Hello guys, welcome back to Olivia's Blooms. Today I am showing you my biggest garden failures and I think it's important to share those for a few reasons. The first is I really want to normalize garden failures. They happen to absolutely everyone. Some gardeners might have more failures than others. It might be a factor of how much time you have to spend and attention you can give your garden or energy, but everybody has failures. And I consider myself a successful gardener, even though I have failures every year. I also think it's important to share them so that hopefully some of you can either learn from my failures or you can give me advice about how I can turn my failure into a success. And lastly, I like to go through and reflect on things that did not go well in my garden so that I can think through, is this something that I just don't have success growing here? I gave it everything it needed. And if so, am I willing to try again because that's how much I love whatever plant I'm trying to grow? Or is this failure something I can learn from and overcome and try differently next year? So I hope you enjoy looking at my failures. I hope that they make you feel okay about yours. And um, let's just dive right in and go look at all the things that went wrong. We're gonna start with a few failures in my vegetable garden. And some of these, you might have been there with me planting them. So this is what a normal cauliflower should look like. Now, this cauliflower should really be much farther along than it is. It used to look like this. So as soon as I planted cauliflower in my vegetable garden, something stripped it down to nothing. And I have several of these and I don't think I'm going to get any cauliflower this year. We have about a couple weeks left till our last frost and I don't think that's enough time for these to form heads. What am I gonna do next year? I'm probably gonna try again in a different spot and hope that whatever pest ate these is gone. I'm not gonna use spray, I'm not gonna use pest control my daughter loves cauliflower, so to me, these are worth a try again, especially because they were so easy to grow and plant in soil blocks. So we'll see what happens next year. If this continues to happen, then I might need to give it a few years break until whatever pest or animal is eating down my cauliflower moves on. Here is vegetable garden failure number two. You guys might be looking at this and thinking, well, how is that a failure? You have a beautiful eggplant plant. Well, I started these eggplants, I will say probably in January, according to the seed packet. They were decimated by black bean aphid. And here in October, I am just starting to see it flower. I have one surprise eggplant, so I mean, I guess, hey, this failure turned into a positive surprise, but that is the only eggplant I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get this year. And I started five or six eggplant plants. So for all that time and energy and space these took up for one eggplant, I am not considering this a success. Now this is the second year I've struggled with eggplant. I love eggplants and I have seed left, so I might try one more time. I think what I'm gonna do differently this year, and I don't know if it will affect anything, but because I started these indoors so early, even though the seed packets said to do that, they did not seem like very healthy plants when I planted them out. And we have a long growing season here, so I think what I'm gonna do is just start these a few weeks before our last frost, transplant them out when the soil is nice and warm, and see if healthier plants make them more resistant to bugs. But I think if that doesn't work, after three times not getting any, I'm going to probably move on and either try a different variety or stop growing eggplants altogether. So failure number two. Failure number three in my vegetable garden. Now this behind me is a beautiful tomato plant that's doing really well. And we'll talk about tomatoes when I do my successes video, but we are here to cry about my 
butterscotch butternut squash. I have never grown butternut squash. I was so excited to grow this. So I consider all of my winter squash this year a failure. The squash bugs took over and they were huge squash bugs. So this is what's left of my butternut squash plant. It died probably a month ago and got zero squash clearly off of it. This is where I had my pumpkin, mini pumpkins, and I got a couple mini pumpkins out of them. I'll put up a picture, but they had already been bored through by squash bugs or some other insect. Here though is my cover crop doing lovely, but I got no winter squash this year. Now, I think part of the problem was that I planted yellow summer squash and that did really well, but drew in all the squash bugs. So I'm not sure if not growing the summer squash and growing the winter squash would mean the winter squash would have more success or if it's going to do the exact same thing and just bring in all those squash bugs. I know a lot of gardeners in this area do not grow squash so because the squash bugs are so bad. So I might try again next year to be determined, but I just love winter squash and especially pumpkins for decorating. All right, on to some flower failures. Here are my very, very sad Celosia. I can't remember the variety name. I will put it up on the screen. This is not supposed to be this short or small, and I was really looking forward to having big plumes to cut, and this is as tall as it's gotten all season. I'm wondering if it gets really wet in this spot and the water sort of pools, so the celosia might not have loved that. I do have some of this seed left. My husband got it for me as a gift, so I might try these again next year in a different spot. We'll see. But what's doing really well in this area, although I need to save these things for my successes, but I've got my Sahara rudbeckia and some beautiful tick seed that reseeded itself for my cool flowers. Now I have Celosia, I'll show you just a few feet away that did fantastic. I cannot believe this. This head has been here since at least June, if not earlier, and it's still looking amazing. These held up pretty well too. And this is, these are supposed to be short. They performed exactly as they should have. You can see the little seeds in there reseeding themselves everywhere. So I'm probably gonna have more of these next year. Yep, here's some more that reseeded themselves. But these are just a few feet away from those. So I'm thinking it's maybe a water issue. Very, very disappointing failure. My Rip City Dahlias. This right here is not a Rip City Dahlia. I believe this is an Igella seed that I threw over here. This is the stem of the dahlia that never happened. And neither of my Rip City dahlias actually sprouted or grew. I think they sprouted and then they immediately died when I put them in the ground. So there's the one back there. And you can see I had the stake and I had the sign. RIP, very apropos for what happened to these dahlias. Now, again, I might have thought it was the conditions, but right next door, I have my more place dahlias that are doing wonderfully. So I'm not sure. I mean, these maybe get the tiniest bit less sun, but it's not much. I am thinking since this happened to both varieties and not the two that were right next to them, that this is something to do with the tubers themselves. And I started these the exact way, same way I started all of my dahlias. And the rest of my dahlias are doing well, so I'm not sure what happened. This is a, a big failure. Oh, and here's another one right here to show you. You don't even have to go far. This is supposed to be a glorious tiger eye sumac, and this time of year, fall, is its time to shine. You can see that it's not shining. I, I don't know what happened to it. You might have to replace this. Right now it's just a very sad. 
Okay, here is another failure. <laughs> but I have no one to blame but myself. And these poor grapevines, they got decimated by Japanese beetles, but that's not even the failure. The failure is that I failed to look at what type of grapes these were when I bought two of them and planted them in my yard. They are disgusting. They have seeds. They have thick, grimy skin. These are, I believe, are the Catawba, and I had promised my kids delicious, fresh, red, seedless grapes. I don't know why I was 100% confident that these were seedless grapes, although they, they absolutely were not, and the tag clearly said that. So I might give them one more year and see if maybe we can make juice out of them. Let me show you the other one back here. But even if they're delicious, juice. I really wanted fresh eating grapes and I don't have a ton of growing space and so I really want every inch to be used by something we love. We'll see. I might give them another year. If you guys have any suggestions for how to use Catalba grapes in a way that doesn't make me want to gag, I would appreciate the advice. Here's another failure. You can probably guess what it is. And this is a common failure of mine that I just don't learn from, which is not doing a good job staking. These are my beautiful Emery Paul dahlias. These are reliable, really well-growing, healthy dahlias. And I staked them clearly not at all enough for what they need. I mean, I put that one little stake and that one little tie-in, and here we have all of these branches falling over. And even if these stems are usable. You can see it sort of broke the plant in the middle there, and that's not really good for the plant. It just makes it more susceptible to disease. I'm probably not the only one, I hope, that has failed at staking. This is a good reminder to myself to do a better job. In some ways I did, but in some ways I didn't. My goal for next year is to do all my dahlias in the raised bed so that I can use Hortanova netting and not keep making the same mistake over and over again. Luckily, I still have some really pretty straight healthy stems. Here's another flower failure that many of you might be sad about in addition since you planted these with me, but as you can see, there's no sign of any lupins here where I planted them. There's lots of self-seeded larkspur and nigella. Absolutely no lupins. I guess there's maybe a one in a million chance that the plant died, but the roots are still living under the soil here, but I don't think that's the case. Um, so I might try those again next year. Again, I have a lot of seed and I might direct sow the lupins and see if they do better, if they just didn't like the transplant shock or the time of year. We'll have to try both, but I just love those lupins and I'm gonna give them another shot. And my last failure I'm gonna show you guys. Again, this one, I have no excuse. It is completely my own failure. And this is another one like staking that I continually make. And that is not paying attention to plant heights. And I got away with it this year, and I really had tons of success with these zinnias, but if you look in the back here, my poor blueberry bushes, which are really the things that I care the most about, these are perennial blueberries. And I thought, hey, I've got some room around them. Why don't I plant some annual cut flowers to take up space before these bushes get big? I got away with it this time, but this is very dangerous because these easily could have choked out these brand new, tender, two-year-old blueberry bushes. And we'll see, I mean, they're, they look okay, but they might have grown even more if I hadn't overcrowded them with zinnias. A short zinnia variety would have been fine. The sun could have still gotten through better than it did. But I am constantly planting things that are too tall, too far forward, and too short, too far back. Oh, I have another one I could show you. Here's my sweet William looking beautiful and healthy. 
way too far back in the bed. These Liatris are gonna outgrow them next year. I'm gonna have to move them. And I don't know why. And look way back there. And these are short plants. They, they belong more up front. <sighs> but for some reason, I thought they'd be great back there. I hope you guys enjoyed looking at all my failures and um, I would love to see your failures and hear about yours. I think if you can laugh at your own mistakes and failures, that makes you a better gardener because you're gonna come across failures, you're gonna make mistakes. They are just part of the process and if you can have a good attitude about them and use them as a learning experience instead of a discouragement, you'll enjoy gardening so much more. So thank you for joining me guys. I hope you had as much fun as I did. Look at this plant right here. If you can even, yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess technically it's a plant, okay.